globally, when you look at healthcare, if healthcare was a country, we would be the fifth largest emitter of greenhouse gases. And so through projects similar to what we've done at UCSF, it gives us an opportunity to help healthcare customers actually reduce their energy consumption. Not only does it help from a greenhouse gas perspective, but it also addresses the bottom line of healthcare organizations. Hello everyone, this is Barbara Humpton, CEO of Siemens USA, and thanks for listening to The Optimistic Outlook. So I hope you enjoyed my last episode with Maisie Devine of AB InBev, where we talked about efforts to decarbonize beer brewing. We're gonna stay on the topic of decarbonization today. This time we're focusing on healthcare. And before we get into it, I wanted us to think about a couple of things. First, how we've defined what it means to be an optimist, which is looking at challenges head on and having the confidence that we can solve them. And second, let's think about what I'll call a framework for solving these challenges that I heard from Siemens Supervisory Board Chairman Jim Schnabe at the TED Countdown Summit recently. Specific to sustainability, Jim spoke of dreams and details. He challenged us to dream big, to set absurd goals, then to believe that we're capable of working through the details. We learned how AB InBev is doing this, and now we'll turn to the promise of green radiology. We're gonna learn about efforts underway to reduce energy usage in medical imaging at University of California, San Francisco, or UCSF. I have two guests today. First, Dr. Sean Woolen, Assistant Professor at UCSF and the Director of Green Radiology. We're also gonna be joined by a leader in our smart infrastructure business, Jerry Folsom. Cool story here, UCSF had drawn in Siemens Health and Ears for support on the initiative. One of their leaders, Vibas Deshpande, who develops MRI scanner technologies, then connected with Jerry for help on reducing energy usage. For 18 months, Jerry and Vibas brainstormed ideas and together they developed the solutions you'll learn about in this episode. Technology that can have a major impact in decarbonizing a sector that currently generates 10% of our country's CO2 emissions. Here's something else. These solutions, which can easily be implemented across hospitals and healthcare systems, also can produce energy savings that help to improve the bottom line for organizations still recovering financially from the pandemic. All right, take a listen. Dr. Woolen and Jerry, it's great to have you both on the podcast. It's great to be here, Barbara. Thanks for having me. Barbara, thanks for the opportunity to join you. And Jerry, I'd like to turn to you first. When we think about the sectors generating significant CO2 emissions, hospitals and healthcare might not be top of mind to our audience. We're more focused on how we deliver patient care and medical breakthroughs. So what do we need to know about the environmental impact of healthcare in the US? Barbara, that's a really good question because uh, you're exactly right. I don't think a lot of people know how much healthcare contributes to greenhouse gases. In the United States, uh, the estimate is approximately 10% of the greenhouse gases that are emitted are emitted uh, because of healthcare. And then globally, when you look at healthcare, if healthcare was a country, we would be the fifth largest emitter of greenhouse gases. So big, big contributor, unfortunately, to greenhouse gases. Wow. And so when we look into this a little deeper, what really stands out are the energy demands of specific technologies like in radiology using CT and MRI technology. As we look into this a little deeper, what really stands out are the energy demands that are specific to radiology using CT and MRI technology. Dr. Woolen, help put that into perspective for us. Which aspects of radiology departments consume the most energy? Certainly, Barbara. To provide some context, radiology departments play a crucial role in interpreting images such as radiographs, ultrasounds, CTs, and MRIs for diagnosing disease and performing image-guided pr procedures. To perform our daily tasks, our workstations and imaging units consume energy, with MRI and CT machines consuming the most amount of energy. To put this in perspective, operating one MRI unit is equivalent to the energy required to power 12 U.S. homes, and one CT unit equates to three U.S. homes. 
So our imaging equipment consumes quite a bit of energy, especially when you think about it from all the equipment used in an imaging department. So Jerry, we now understand the importance of reducing the energy consumption for imaging, but there's still another opportunity here, which is being able to generate immediate energy and operational savings for hospitals and healthcare systems. We know that the pandemic placed tremendous pressure on these institutions. They've struggled financially, and many of them are just now showing improvements to their bottom line as they continue to deliver excellent patient care. So for healthcare systems and hospitals, finding ways to create operational savings is really critical. Have I got that right? You are exactly right. Um, that is one of the key areas that hospitals are focusing on is how can they reduce operational expenses. And energy consumption and reducing energy consumption is one of the fastest ways that they can reduce operational costs. And so through projects similar to what we've done at UCSF, it gives us an opportunity to help healthcare customers actually reduce their energy consumption, be it with uh, MRIs and in many other ways as well throughout healthcare facilities. So uh, reducing that energy consumption, not only does it help from a greenhouse gas perspective, but it also addresses the bottom line of healthcare organizations. And that's very much top of mind of leadership of healthcare across the U.S. and across the globe. And Dr. Willen, how does what Jerry's touching on here resonate with what your team has experienced at UCSF? It resonates with me strongly because of the financial challenges the healthcare system faced during the pandemic. It has been reported that the U.S. healthcare system lost over $200 billion. As this podcast is titled The Optimistic Outlook, Let's focus on the silver lining, which is that the pandemic showcased the remarkable resilience of healthcare systems and prompted global organizations to devise innovative strategies for pandemic preparedness. And the truly uplifting aspect of reducing energy consumption in radiology departments lies in its potential to simultaneously cut operation costs and initiate a path towards sustainable healthcare decarbonization. The alignment of financial and sustainable operational policies is a significant advantage. And the potential savings also serves as a catalyst for the healthcare sector to explore more eco-friendly approaches to practicing medicine, something I think everyone would like to see happen. It's so often true that necessity is the mother of invention. I mean, it's it's so interesting to see what um, technologists can come up with. And, and frankly, sometimes it's not technologists, it's practitioners who say, surely there's, there's a better way. So, okay, so we know that there's a need for investing in technology for better patient care and optimal patient experience, but also to make healthcare more sustainable energy savings could free up capital for that. That's what I'm hearing. And I'll add that there are now hundreds of billions of dollars available to healthcare facilities through federal funding and tax and utility incentives that are coming through the bipartisan infrastructure law, as well as the Inflation Reduction Act. These are resources that we could use to improve energy efficiency and implement renewable energy technologies. We'll put some of these specifics there in the show notes um, that'll be available to the audience. But my point is this, we're in a decade of climate action, and now the funding resources and the technologies are here to drive that action forward. So, Dr. Willen, I want to learn more about how you and UCSF took action. I'll share for our listeners that you're a radiologist yourself and an expert in the field. You've dedicated your research efforts to patient-centered care and improving radiology practices, but what drew you to green radiology? And why is this initiative for you and your team so important? I vividly recall waking up one day, the orange skies and ashes were falling on the sidewalk. It felt surreal and apocalyptic, taking care of patients coming in to the hospital for COVID-19 and having unsafe air to breathe outside because of the nearby fires. It was a wake, the wake-up call that I think many, myself included, need it to address the very real climate change that is happening in front of our eyes. I knew that the healthcare sector significantly contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and the changing climate is harming health. But now I was compelled to take action. 
Through this call to action, I was able to connect with many talented people, including Chris Hess and Alistair Martin at UCSF, as well as Vibesh Jaspandi and Jerry Folsom at Siemens to form a partnership to improve sustainability in radiology. Through this partnership, we were able to use existing energy technologies to create a novel energy monitoring program to both understand energy consumption in a radiology department and identify methods to decrease usage to ensure a more sustainable path forward. I think the most important part of the initiative for me is identifying achievable and simple changes that make a large impact. Yeah, and, and, and then you're having to speak the language of the medical community in convincing others to get engaged with this. I, I know a big part of this was actually publishing your results. I'm curious about where you are on that journey right now. Yeah, so we've just published our results in the uh, Journal of Radiology. And the main two things that we looked at for the paper were um, simple operational changes, as well as um, ways to design the MRIs to be more eco-friendly. And so the first thing of simple operation changes of just powering down MRIs to lowest energy state, we found that switching MRIs from idle to off reduced power consumption by 25 to 33%. And when we looked at the potential savings for turning 30 MRIs off for 12 hours overnight, it could save up to $88,000 and 447 megatons of CO2 equivalents. And then looking at EcoPower, which what modulates hardware not needed to cool when the machine is in system off, it reduced the power draw by an additional 28% from the current lowest power mode. And if you think about the potential savings to the U.S. healthcare for implementing this on all outpatient MRIs overnight, it could save up to $11 million and over 50,000 CO2s equivalents. And I know that the paper is being well received. And I'm especially excited that it's been Health and Ears who've been such a strong partner to you through this whole effort. Kudos to the entire team. Now, Jerry, at Siemens, we love it when a customer comes to us with a good problem to solve. And a key part of what we did here was gather the data we needed to help UCSF determine the most effective ways to reduce energy usage. How did you and the team go about that? What did the data tell you? So, Barbara, this was an exciting project because it was, um, for me, very new territory to figure out who I should be collaborating with on this. Um, initially, Vibas Deshpande of Siemens Health and Ears came to me and said, you know, Jerry, we're looking for a way to measure power consumption of MRIs uh, because we are working on this potential research project with UCSF. Can smart infrastructure help? And I, so I explored, looked into it, and absolutely we could. And the more that we talked and the more we collaborated on what we were doing and began to understand the data that we were going to receive and use in this research, we began to identify other ways that we could leverage that data. For example, from a power um, consumption standpoint, understanding how we could take that. And in the very near term, uh, we could use that uh, to help with a carbon neutral strategy uh, through a carbon credit type approach uh, for doing something in the very near term but also um, it provided insight into how much were MRIs actually being used. Um, there is some visibility to it, but it gave a whole new perspective. And the beauty of the capability that we um, came up with and created is that it's highly scalable. It's a capability that we can take uh, to one location uh, that has MRIs, uh, or it could be an entire enterprise of, of uh, MRI locations. It could be across hundreds of locations, giving that broad enterprise view into what's happening regarding power usage of MRI. So uh, it was really exciting to see how we were able to pull a number of pieces together that hadn't been pulled together in this way to address this specific need at UCSF. That's fantastic. So if we think about something like a healthcare system with multiple hospitals in a fleet, say, um, yeah. or if we were thinking of ourselves as um, colleagues of Siemens Health and Ears who want to know how their equipment is performing in various locations, you're saying the, the scalable solution you came up with can help answer those kinds of questions. 
Exactly. It can provide that visibility to power consumption that has not existed before, and it pre presents a whole new uh, set of data that's available uh, for understanding how to more efficiently operate, but also on how much those units are being used as well. You know, when we're talking about making changes to operations in existing facilities, sometimes the easiest way to do it is to bring in new equipment. Are the, the techniques and approaches you're using, can, can they be implemented with existing equipment? Yes, it can, Barbara. Um, that's one of the exciting uh, aspects of the solution that we put together is that whether you have existing MRIs or you have uh, new ones that you're putting in, both uh, with, in both cases, it will work. Uh, we will retrofit into an existing MRI environment or as part of the installation process for a new MRI, it'll be just another component that's actually installed. So it works in both environments. Oh, well, then let me follow up. Is this independent of the manufacturer of the imaging equipment itself? Yes, it is, Barbara. Uh, it can be um, work on a variety of manufacturers. So uh, it doesn't have to be Siemens Health and Ears, but uh, we, we can work on any of those. That's great to hear. Dr. Woolen, that might sound pretty simple. The idea that simply making sure machines are powered down when they're not in use, tracking their power usage when they're up, um, the, that, that, that sounds straightforward, but imaging teams really need to be ready at all times. Hospitals operate nonstop. How do you balance this? The idea that the equipment needs to be on and available all the time and yet used in the most energy efficient uh, way possible. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Barbara. Hospitals must always keep some equipment on standby for immediate use as emergencies demanding prompt imaging arise frequently and time is crucial. And so, you know, traditionally it was thought that like MRIs would need to be um, powered up all the way at all times. But with, um, you know, with learning and working through Siemens, we learned that there is actually an ability to power them down to the energy just needed uh, for cooling. And, you know, through this partnership and working with some of the Siemens engineers with a focus on decreasing energy, the, um, the, you know, smart engineers at Siemens were able to find a way to create an eco power mode that actually consumes even less energy um, during, during this um, system off state by essentially adjusting some of the components of the MRI machine. And so, you know, even though MRIs need to be cooled at all times, they don't need to consume the highest level of energy at all times. However, it's worth noting that in most hospitals, only a limited number of imaging devices are required for emergent care overnight. So the machines that remain unused during this time can be identified and serves the greatest potential for energy savings without compromising patient care. But I will say it is always important to factor in workflow, frontline workers, engineering and feasibility when designing new policies or protocols that result in change. And this is why the UCSF Siemens partnership has been so successful as it's a melting pot of individuals with different backgrounds and focuses working together towards a common goal. There's a theme that keeps coming up in conversations I'm having about technology all across the board. And it's that multidisciplinary teams often find the most creative solutions. And I think what I hear you saying is, yes, in the hospital environment, you have that kind of multidisciplinary approach, but you actually welcomed uh, some, some electrical engineers and, and some of your equipment provider engineering team into the room to help you all brainstorm. What was the team dynamic like? Yeah, so the team dynamic was great. Um, just having, you know, as I mentioned before, this melting pot of individuals. So, you know, me being an expert in imaging and our, um, you know, radiology um, workflows combined with, you know, Jerry, um, an expert in energy monitoring and technologies along with, you know, uh, specialist in MRI technology from Siemens Health and Ears, high voltage electricians to kind of look at the devices facility engineers, um, uh, informatics specialists that look at network jobs, all of these individuals putting their thoughts together. But I think the biggest thing is this shared vision of wanting to make a more sustainable healthcare system and driving us to make big change. And so 
it's just amazing to me when you get everybody's thoughts and perspectives together with a shared vision, what you can really accomplish. And I, I think at UCSF with this uh, recent pilot initiative, I think that's exactly what we're able to do. That's exciting. Uh, Jerry, let me bring this back to you then, because um, obviously we do, as Siemens, come to the table with a very um, specific perspective. I've got to believe that the data that you've uh, gathered through this exercise is really valuable in terms of leveraging this elsewhere in our portfolio. Uh, tell me about some of the results for Siemens and even Siemens Health and Ears as a result of this work. One of the things that we learned um, through this is how um, the different teams, uh, number one, could work together to actually approach this problem, um, but also how uh, in combining some of the components that we put together, for example, uh, taking power meters from our electrical products group, uh, combining that with um, our cloud-based capabilities to provide this information is something that uh, you know, we had not known in the past. And now we know that we have uh, that ability to pull it together and not only, you know, for the U.S. market, but we believe now also for the global market. So um, I think the exercise and what we went through to understand, you know, the requirements of this, finding out, you know, how much, how much power an MRI uses and then understanding what uh, impact we could have on it really uh, that was a motivational uh, factor for us to really drive. And you know, it's as though we had really uncovered a, a significant uh, area where we could have an impact. And so um, as far as the capabilities, it's really pulling on um, different areas that I, I think has been the, the biggest win for us, showing how it doesn't have to be one group that just puts everything together. It's it's a collection, and, and I think uh, Dr. Woolen really said it well. It's you know it's like a melting pot of individuals that are bringing a number of ideas together because it wasn't one person; it was a collection of people researching, bringing ideas to the table, and many meetings, uh, many weekly calls going through to uh, understand the issues that we need to address and how we could address them. You know, it strikes me that this is how we scale. What you all have actually implemented is something, it's a change that looks prudent, it looks practical, it looks economically advantageous, and the big question is, why not? So with you all getting the message out, hopefully this podcast helping to get the message out, I'm looking forward to seeing the impact. And actually, that leads me to my final question. Dr. Woolen, I love to end these shows by asking our guests to think about the future and, and express their optimistic vision for how this change that you're working on will impact us all. How will this green radiology pilot at UCSF advance our sustainability goals for today and the future? And how could bringing the best practices from this pilot to more facilities positively impact the future for all of us? Well, the pilot at UCSF Radiology demonstrates a way to visualize and reduce energy usage. Siemens engineers were able to create a new eco power mode that consumed even less energy than the current lowest power mode. My hope is that this pilot demonstrates the value of smart infrastructure to uncover areas of energy and efficiency, and that it's not difficult or interruptive to take simple actions to reduce energy consumption. I'm optimistic healthcare will continue to make great strides towards reducing the carbon footprint in the coming years. That's a wonderful vision for the future. I'm really proud of Siemens Health and Ears, first for stepping up to the challenge and then recognizing that there were experts in the field of electrical usage that would be able to help them on the journey. Jerry, Dr. Woolen, I wanna thank you both for joining us today. We've learned a lot, first of all, about the sheer power of making changes that are right before our eyes. Yes, we all have objectives that we're working to accomplish, but to stop and think about what kind of power use, what kind of emissions are, are resulting from our daily activities can lead to solutions, solutions that not only work locally for us, but can scale and have a massive impact. Thank you for being leaders in this field and thank you for joining the Optimistic Outlook. Thank you, Barbara.
Thank you, Barbara. Thanks for having me. So having a big dream about our sustainable future and working through the details, this is how we move at the speed and scale that's necessary in this decade of climate action. But there's still one more powerful concept in this episode, and that's individual initiative. In the episode, we heard from people who identified a need and brought a solution to fruition, a solution that when scaled will have major impact. And how many times did you hear them use the word team? It's not necessarily technically complex, right? With technology, there are no extra points awarded for complexity. The easier we can make things to deploy, the faster we can move. When we bring the physical world online, when we follow the data, oftentimes what we end up learning is that simple solutions like powering down machines can have an outsized impact on the path to decarbonization and even to reducing operational costs. There's a lot more information in our show notes, so I hope you'll go there to learn more. Thank you again to our guests on this episode and thank you all for listening. Please follow us on social media and on your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you for tuning in.